Yeah. Let's go for a boat ride today. <laughs> I guess I'll be building traps. I've got 15 traps built so far. I've still got that much left of the first roll. There's probably at least four, maybe five more traps left in there. And then I still have the whole other full roll yet. I might get 40 out of this. Here's a little time-lapse photography. The birth of a trap. That's the bottom panel. And then these are the other parts that I've already cut out which is a tedious and really boring thing to do, so I didn't bother to film that. And now you're going to see the trap go together. These are your hog rings, which hold everything together. And these are the hog ring pliers. First thing I always do is make sure I've got one of these loaded in the hog ring pliers. I can do this single-handedly. That way when you've got your panels ready to go together, you've got your ring and pliers ready to go. And you can see that the pliers there are spring-loaded, which holds the hog and ring in place. Now I've got my side panel in place, which I measured uh, the location for the end of it, uh, basically just by counting the uh, hexagons there and uh, going right to the middle. So now we're ready to go ahead and latch this down with the hog ring pliers. And I can't do that with one hand, so be back in a second. Okay, I've got my hog ring in my pliers, my panels in place, and it's just a simple squeeze. And there it is. I've got the first side panel in place. Let's see? Just a few rings here and there, keep her in position. The next step is to take that corner, fold it up, and clamp it down with a ring as well. Just like that. Now the rest is easy. I join my side panels together, a ring here, a ring here, and then I'll rotate this around, find my center line and stick the bottom down on that side, on this side, and then go ahead and nail it down just like I did this one. Just like so. And like I said, I'll wrap this around, find my center line, and stick that down. And then we'll do the same thing for the next two panels. This where it joins together is our trap opening, or it will be when the trap is finished. Our last panel going on here, the easiest one. Bring it around, join up with the other one. I'm doing this single handed. reach in from the back side because it's the best angle of approach. And crimp her down. The next step is to make the bait compartment which I make out of these 8 inch wide panels that I cut out. won't use the whole thing for the bait compartment but there will be enough left over to make one of the doors on top which we'll get to in a minute. My bait compartments are four inches square, which you can see I've bent this around, and then I've got this excess that I'll cut off. It became the door, and then right along here at the seam, I'll hog ring it together, and then stick it inside the middle of the trap. Here I have the bait compartment finished, and I've got it secured in the middle of the trap with just one ring. And the next step turn the trap up on the side so I can finish connecting it to the bottom panel. 
that step being done now it's time to put on the top I'll align these edges you can see there's the edge right there throw this on get it squared up and zap it down the top is attached now all around the perimeter the next step flip it up on its side and attach the top of the bait compartment with the bait compartment on attached the next step, step I can't speak today the next step is to cut out the opening and now the opening is cut out you want to make sure you get it open as wide as you can all the way around the perimeter personally I use one of those uh, corner store insulated mugs to scoop out a measure of bait and dump it in through there and you definitely want all the the, uh, the room you, you can get to pour that down in there otherwise it'll be spilling all over the place I utilize some of my cutout scraps for the uh, bait compartment doors this would have come from here for either the uh, escape hatch or the hatch where you dump your catch out so I'll trim this up and mount it here for my bait door the bait door is attached with a couple of hog rings for hinges and you'll see that I bent this little corner up here this is where my shock cord will run across to hold the door closed the shock cord is attached with hog rings as well, two at each end. And then I'll stretch it out and attach the other end. And there it is completed. To open your bait compartment, you just move that out of the way, lift it up, dump your bait, and then pluck it back down. Next, we'll put the uh, trap emptying door here and the escape hatch here. Here's my leftover piece from the bait compartment. I'm going to lay this up here, get it centered up where it goes, and I'll do the same thing as I did with the uh, bait door. Put two hog rings on it for hinges, and then once that's done, I'll cut out my opening, and then we'll install the shock cord for this door. I've got my opening cut out. Here again, that'll become a bait door for another trap. I've got my door attached and hinge. You can see I bent the corner down there and that's to match the uh, outside corner of the trap so we don't have anything sticking out. Shock cord comes next. Here's the shock cord for the door. There's no real science to this. You kind of just got to get a feel for it to get the right length and where to hook it up. But I start from the inside probably about there which leaves that much sticking out which is enough to stretch over to the end of the door I hook my cord up in the center of the door that way the pressure is applied evenly to keep it closed and if you do it just right the door will stay open when it's open and it'll snap firmly closed there again two hog rings to secure it and I guess I did it just right because it's staying open and snaps firmly closed. It's magic. <laughs> the last step is to spin her around to the opposite corner. Grab our length of pre-cut panel and we'll lay out our escape hatch. I make my escape hatch the same size as my dump door because I figure fair is fair. And uh, same thing, two hog rings for hinges. Bend that corner down here to match the edge of the trap. Cut out our opening. And then this will be tied off with a piece of biodegradable twine. The last cutout, another future bait trap door. We've got our opening, 
door closed and then comes the twine and there you have it that little bit of juke twine there will rot away real quick if the trap becomes lost let the occupants escape we've got our bait door we've got our dump door and a completed trap all that's left is for the buoy and the line